to win a cool million. It's the Caribbean Poker Adventure here on the World Poker Tour. The World Poker Tour is a series of 17 international poker tournaments featuring the biggest games. Well, there it is. It's an ace. It's over. The greatest players and the largest payouts on the planet. In paradise, six players, $5.6 million. The sun will shine on a million dollar payday tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi everyone, welcome to the Bahamas. We're on Paradise Island at the spectacular Atlantis Resort where $5.6 million is up for grabs in the WPT Caribbean Poker Adventure. I'm Mike Sexton. And I'm Vince Van Patten. And Mike, how great is this? You know, while most poker players are usually grinding it out in the dark casino, the WPT has taken the action outside. We are in the sunshine, right smack dab in the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. And I'll tell you something, the only thing that's going to be disappearing here today is the $1.3 million first prize going into somebody's pocket. Well, we started out four days ago with 724 players who either qualified online or put up $7,800 to enter in hopes to take home that $1.3 million first prize. We're now down to our final six players. This is like WPT's version of Robinson Crusoe, <laughs> except with cards, drink girls, and six poker castaways fighting it out for survival. Well, one guy that's not lost at a WPT final table is our chip leader, David Singer. And Vince, we just saw David a few weeks ago, remember, at Borgata, where he came in as the chip leader. Unfortunately for David, he went out sixth in that tournament. But tonight, I look for David to cross the finish line. Okay, in second chip position from Waterloo, Canada, Steve Paul Ambrose. He's only 22 years Years old. He's been playing poker for a couple years, but he is someone to watch. Moving over to third chip position from Stockholm, Sweden, is Anders Henriksson. He's a professional poker player. Got in this tournament through a satellite. Starting out in fourth chip position today is Brooke Leiter from West Fargo, North Dakota. Brooke is a self-employed businessman, and he got into this tournament by winning a $62 satellite. What a parlay that would be for him. And Vance, break out the pacifiers, because the next two guys at this final table are 18 years old. The legal age incident that you can play poker here in Nassau. In fifth chip position with 794,000 in chips is Michael Higgins from Proctorville, Ohio. Michael's a student at Ohio State, and Vince, he and I got a lot in common. Same first name. We both started playing poker at a young age. We're both Buckeyes. Okay, the other 18-year-old, you talk about short stack. He is down to his last $231,000. Ozzy Shake from Staten Island, New York. Will he become the first 18 18-year-old to take home over a million dollars on the World Poker Tour. He's got his work cut out for him. Boy Scouts playing for millions. That's right. The PokerStars.net Caribbean Poker Adventure is about to get underway. Let's talk about the structure. The antes are going to be $2,000 each. The blinds are going to be ten and 20000 what amazes me about this final table, Vince, is the youth that's sitting here. We've got two 18-year-olds, a 22-year-old, a 24-year-old. That's incredible. They're going for this big prize money at that young age. Well, online players up against real human beings for the first time. Let's get started. Action's going to be on Steve Paul Ambrose. Steve is from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And he looks down at a wired pair of sevens on the very first hand. Not bad. Well, he's starting out with 1.7 million in chips, and he's going to make it 65,000 to go. Into the veteran of the table, David Singer. David's got queen nine and mucks it. Round to Brooke Leiter. The guy from North Dakota, he's got ace 10 off suit. Ops to lay it down. All right. Michael Higgins with the button. King six throws it away. So just a couple more people to beat. Anders going out. And now Ozzy Shake, the short stack, looks down at his hand. Oh, look at this, Vince. It's like a dream come true for this kid. You're in the big blind. You pick up two aces. A man's raised in front of you. He's got the weapons of mass destruction on the very first hand. He's short stacked. It's just exactly what he needs to happen here to double up early on to become a force at this table. And there go in all his chips. What a dream come true for the short stack, Ozzy Shake. Now, Steve Paul Ambrose says, count his chips. This is the first hand. You would think that you would study and know the amount of chips that all your opponents have. Well, he's the second chip leader at this point. He's got the middle pair. You know, you got it. I think it's a gimme call. Well, he's getting about two to one odds on his money. He's still going to have well over a million and a half left, even if he calls and loses this pot. So you're right, Fence. I can't imagine he's going to lay it down. Can you drag in the 65? Well, Ozzy, a former city champion wrestler, 
Right now, he's close to having his opponent pinned here, Vance. Two aces against two sevens. I'll tell you something, Ozzy has a great online reputation. All these guys know it. That's 164, Mark. You're right, Vance. He has a reputation being very successful online. And if he's successful with these two aces against the two sevens, he's going to double up on hand number one. A little over three to one favorite right now. 18-year-old up against the 22-year-old. I call. And he gets the call. But Ozzy Shake is going to love it here. Two aces versus two sevens. Oh, and he clenches his fist. Ozzy Shake. You can't do better than this, Vance. Get all your money in with two aces before the flop. Nice hand. First time in the history of the tour, Vance picked up two aces and got all in on hand number one. What a start this could be for Ozzy here if the two aces hold up. The crowd loving this. Here we go with the flop. There's no seven dealer, please. Oh, oh no! A seven right on the flop. Oh, well, you see, Steve, he can't believe it. And Ozzy is in shock himself, Ben. Before the flop, he's a big favorite with the two aces. Now, he's about a 90% underdog. And remember, we saw Rook fold an ace, which means he only has one out. Three sevens for Steve Paul Ambrose. Wow. Here comes the turn. It's please. a six. No good ace for Ozzy. Not going to get the diamond for the ace runner. On the river, please. He's got to catch that case ace on the river, Vince, to stay alive in this tournament. Or Ozzy Shake is going to have a bad beat. He's going to be talking about the rest of his life. This is just a total catastrophe, but there is one card coming up. Let's see if he can do it. He needs to catch the lone ace left in the deck. It's a three. Didn't well, get it. It's a three. Well, that is unbelievable. Boy. Hand number one, shot down, all in before the flop of two aces, uh, out in sixth place. First time ever on the World Poker Tour that a man has been knocked out on the very first hand. It is Ozzy Shake. This 18-year-old with terrific composure. Good game, guys. Good luck. What a train wreck. I mean, you know, you sit there, you just dream about picking up two aces. He picks them up, bam, they get shattered on the first deal. That's what you call a bad beat. Yes, that's a bad beat, and that's what happens in poker, and that's just how it happens. Oh, he has had less play time than Rudy. He's the sixth-place finisher. We are down to five. More great action from the PokerStars.net Caribbean Poker Adventure. In seat six, Ozzy Sheik. I can't wait until the final table. I'm very excited. Oh, two aces. My strategy going into this final table is try to double up as soon as possible. I come, so I have a playable stack. There's no seven dealer, please. Oh! oh! Ozzy Shake is out in sixth place. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, the PokerStars.net Caribbean Poker Adventure. And after the very first hand, we are down to five. Well, Vince, the crowd's still stunned by the outdraw that Steve Paul Ambrose just made. Knocked out a man who had two aces. Ozzy Shake, that's the second time he's done that in this tournament, Vince. He was all in earlier with two queens against two aces, and he flopped quads to crack those aces. So he is on a roll. Well, it was ugly there for Mr. Shake. And back to this hand, Anders Hendrickson quickly folding his hand. And back to our hero, Steve. This time he has 10-9 offsuit, and he's going to raise. Well, why not, Vince? You can outdraw a man that's got two aces. You figure <laughs> you can win on anything. He makes it 60,000 to go. David quickly out around to Brooke Leiter. He's got a decent hand here. He's got a wired pair of fives. Some guys like to call with the two fives. Some like to come over the top with a pair. Brooke is going to call. And now Michael Higgins in the big blind. He throws away his queen three. So we have two-way action. Steve versus Brooke. Pair of fives versus ten nine. Here come the first three. Flop is ace, ace, seven with two hearts. And Brooke quickly checks his aces and fives. Let's see if Steve continues this cock and bull story. With just 10-9, looks like he's getting some chips ready. Yep. Yeah, it's not a big bet, though, Vince. Just 74000 into a $150,000 pot. A little tester. And now Brooke has got to think this through. He's going to say, hey, this guy raised before the flop. He's in late position. Does he have an ace? Does he have me beat? He believes he did. He throws it away. Well, Vince, there's a case that many players would lead out with the pair when it come ace, ace, seven. There, just hoping your opponent didn't have an ace in that spot. But he opted to check. Give Steve credit for making the bet, and right now, he is on a nice little roll. You beat out a pair of aces. I mean, you got to feel it's fate. It's destiny. This is going to be your time. Oh, you're right. Going back down to the felt, Brooke Leiter this time with King Nine of Hearts, caps his cards. He's under the gun, as we say, in first position. 
60. And he's going to raise it, makes it 60,000 to go. Now Michael Higgins, our other 18-year-old, he's got a mid-pair, pair of sevens. Cool. Says, I'm going to call it. Well, the Ohio State Buckeye is going to make the call with the two sevens. Anders quickly folding, and now Steve wants to go for the hat trick three times in a row. He's got king four spades this time. Lays his hand down. David throws in the Doyle Brunson 10 deuce. So two way action. Brooke versus Michael. King nine versus a pair of sevens. Here comes the flop. The flop is queen nine three with two diamonds. Brooke got a piece of that, got the pair of nines, and he's first to act. He's going to bet 100,000. He's going to bet with the nines, and now Michael with his sevens. Wow, raise. he says raise, Vance. <laughs> That's amazing for an 18-year-old kid to raise like this when there's two overcards on the board and his opponent raised before the flop on top of it and bet on the flop. That's going to make Brooks squirm here a bit. You raise before the flop. You catch second best pair. Well, Vance, because of the WPT hole cam brought to you by Budweiser, we can see that Brooke has the best hand with the two nines. But when you're sitting at that table, and your opponent raises you 200,000 more, and you've got second pair, you're not liking it. Oh, and he's got to lay the hand down, and right now, Brooke is getting whipped around by the youngsters. Vince, I don't blame Brooke for the way he played that hand. He raised before the flop. He bet on the flop. He simply got outplayed there. Give him credit. Well, Brooke is 34 years old. You're going after over a million dollars. I mean, when you're 34, that's a lot of money. But when you're 18, it's like, you know, who cares? <laughs> My name is Michael Higgins, and this is the first live tournament that I've ever played. After the first day, I believe I've gotten 10 times better. To win $1.36 million would be life-changing at this point, but hopefully in the near future, it won't be that much money to me. And right now, it is the youngsters that are moving the chips around and making it happen. Well, action's going to be on, Michael. He looks down at a 10-8 offsuit, lays it down. Into Anders from Stockholm. Got Jack six of diamonds, wants no part of it, goes away. Back around to Steve on the button with 5-4 offsuit, lays it down. And now David Singer, the vet, Queen Deuce in the small blind, says, I'm going to call this. And Brooke Leiter with a junky little 4-3. Has an option to go up, but says, no, I'm fine. So two-way action, 4-3 four, versus queen two. Here's the flop. Oh, a beautiful flop for Brooke. He's flopped three threes. Yes, he has. Action's on David. Oh, and this is good for Brooke. He's seeing the man on the right betting into him when he flops a set. Really bets 30,000 at this pot. Oh, and look at that hesitation by Brooke. A little acting job there. Brooke going into his Hollywood mode. <laughs> You see David Singer glancing out the side of his eyes, watching every move that Brooke is making here. Oh, he does an okie dokie I call. Yep, he's going to slow play the trips. Nice work by Brooke. Here comes the turn card. Oh, it's a three. Well, Vance, I'll tell you one thing. He's not going to get outplayed this time. <laughs> David slows he's down. He's got four of a kind. Oh, David luckily checks. And now let's watch the performance of 34-year-old Brooke Leiter. It's got to check it nicely well, done. I like that play too, Vince. Got a trap here. In case his opponent's going for a straight or a flush or anything. River card, David, you don't want to hit anything here, believe me. The nine of spade comes off. David is not going to fall into anything. He's checked once again. Well, David Singer was the big chip leader at Borgata. Ended up going out sixth in that spot. He came into this final table as the big chip leader. He made one stab at this pot. It looks like he's waving the flag now, Vince. Oh, but look at the Brooke and, you know, just working his improv chops here. Well, David knows the only hand he could beat is a possible straight draw, meaning his opponent had like a 4-6 on the flop. Now, usually strong means weak in poker. Weak means strong. And now if you look at Brooke, you notice that he's acting like he's, you know, indecisive. He's trying to say, I'm not that strong. Please believe me and please call everything I got. 80,000. 80,000? Yes, 80,000. David has to go away because he has nothing. David say, I don't want to see that again. Get that out of my face. <laughs> Brooke Leiter picking up a hand. He tried to lure his opponent into coming into that pot somehow. Yeah, he did. David, a little too shrewd for him. Got out of the way, just gave up the pot. 
five players remain down here in the beautiful Bahamas. Over a million dollars going to the winner here today. Who's going to take the title? Stay tuned. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. I hold the distinction of being the only player at a World Poker Tour final table to go in as a chip leader and come out second. Just nothing went right for him today. But Mike Sexton told me that the other day, and I said, everybody has to be famous for something. We're looking Paradise Lagoon, five players remaining. Well, our current chip leader is former environmental lawyer David Singer, now poker professional. He's got about two and a half million in chips. In second place, Steve Paul Ambrose from Canada. In third place, Anders Henderson from Sweden. And the action's going to be on Anders here. Looks down and a junkie six deuce throws it away. Steve looks down at the 10 4, the Highway Patrol folds. And now David Singer with the button. He's got a seven of diamonds. He raises it up 35,000 to make it 55. Now, Brooke Leiter has a 10 7 of clubs here in the small blind. Call. Looks like he's going to take a flop with it, Vince. And the last one, Michael Higgins, the 18-year-old, also with an A7 in the big blind, already invested. Oh. Well, there's 140,000 out there, cost him 35,000 more to call, and he does make the call. So, so three-way action. Yeah. Two players have A7. The other one has 10-7. Here comes the first three. The flop is King Jack Six with two hearts. One of the players hitting. No help to anybody. Action on Brook first. He checks it. Michael checking. Giving the green light to the vet. David Singer, no, he's not going to fool around. He checks. Doesn't want to fall in any more traps. He ups the check. Fourth Street coming up. It is a nine of spades. So two potential flush draws out there now. You notice that Brook has a two-way straight draw. Yeah, he's got the double belly buster. Catch a queen to make a straight or an eight to make a straight, but he opts a check. And now the 18-year-old catching nothing on the turn card, but he's going to bet nonetheless. Wow, 75,000 with absolutely nothing here. He makes David go out, and now it's around to Brooke Leiter. Well, Vince, he's got the two-way straight draw, but with two potential flushes out there. Just can't imagine he'll make this call with this hand. You figure if a queen comes up, he couldn't get any action anyway if he made his hand. Well, he was the poker puppy for this young kid before, but he's going to make this call. He's, right, gonna... he's made the call for 75000 Michael, barely legal, very disgusted that he gets a call there. River card coming up. And then well, an eight of hearts comes off, so Brooke has made the straight. What a beautiful card. He's made the straight, but of course there are flush possibilities out there. He's rechecking his mess kit here now. I can't believe it. Just to make sure he's hit the straight. Nicely done. But then you're thinking to yourself, wait a second, this Michael bet with four flushed. Does he have a flush? Should I bet this and find out right now where I am? You know, against an aggressive player like Michael Higgins, you might want to just check and hope he bluffs at the pot here. Go 100,000. He is going to bet it. Well, he doesn't know Michael was bluffing. He's trying to get a value bet in here. Makes a $100,000 bet. Into the young Michael Higgins. Well, the only thing he can do, Vince, is either come over the top and try to take the pot away from him, like he did before, or to fold his hand. I can't imagine he could call with ace high. And he's not going to get fancy. He goes away this time. Well, he makes a good lay down. Brooke Leiter gambling at the right time, makes a straight on the river, and takes down the pot. Well, early on, Brooke Leiter, 34 years old, was playing in fear, letting these guys push him around. No more. He's picking up cards. He's playing strong. You never know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm trying not to think about the money that's at stake. I'm trying to just focus on playing the best poker possible right now. Everyone at the table I have a lot of respect for. I know to survive a field this large that they're not jokers. That's got to help his confidence at this point. He's starting to pick up some pots. Action's going to be on our man from New York, the chip leader, David Singer, right now. He's got 7-3. He can't play it. Once again, around to Brook. He looks down at the queen nine of hearts. We know he likes to play these suited cards. He just won the last pot with 10-7 of clubs. See what he's going to do here. Brook Leiter likes to stay in a lot of pots. 65. And there he goes again. He's going to raise it up to 65,000 to go. Now into Michael Higgins. With the button, he folds a 10-6. And now Anders Hendrickson. Well, he looks down at a dismal eight-deuce offsuit. 
can't get very excited about that, you would think. He is capping his cards. Now, that's generally a sign a guy's going to play a pot. <laughs> what and is he, he up to here? Well, you can't imagine he's going to make a call with an eight deuce offsuit. Is he thinking about coming over the top? So far, he has played very tight. Taking his time. Is he thinking this guy over there was in a pretty good position to raise? I don't think he's that strong. Am wow. I going to take it away? Yes, he is. Look at this, Vance. He is raising it. He makes a 210,000 to go with an eight deuce off suit. Oh, he is a Swedish hooligan right now. <laughs> oh, man. Making this raise. Steve with queen five goes out. Only one to beat now is Brooke. Well, look at Brooke now. Little antsy. Stares over at his opponent's stack. They both have about a million in chips. Now the Swede has raised, but with nothing but testosterone. What a move he's made. Can he push Brooke out? Well, Vince, it's hard to call a re-raise when you have Queen-9. Brooke is saying, what did I get myself into? I have to play every hand. What's the matter with me? Full. He's going out. I just chalked that one up to a lot of heart by the Swede there, Vince. You know, to re-raise someone with an eight-deuce offsuit, folks, that is playing some poker. That is well done by the Swede. Strong play. Five players remain here in the Bahamas. They're playing good poker. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more. Playing poker, I like very much because it's so fun. I love to be in like a place like this in the Bahamas. I, I love the place. To play poker in the sun is a new one for me. Hundred of the people that are playing in this tournament qualified online at Poker Stars. Experience is the key element in poker. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be better, be a good player? You have to play, play, play. Playing poker in Atlantis is, uh, for sure, it's a little bit of paradise. It's a vacation here in the sun with a chance to win $1.3 million. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. You're watching the Caribbean Poker Adventure in the Bahamas. Absolutely beautiful day here at the Atlantis Resort. Right now, the chip leader still David Singer from New York. And these are going to be $3,000. They have gone up $15,000 and $30,000 blinds. Action's going to be on the Swede, Anders Henriksen. He looks down at the King Queen. Not a bad hand in a five handed poker game, and he's going to raise it. Comes in for $90,000. On to Steve. Paul Ambrose, he's got five three of hearts, cannot play. David quickly folding his 9-4. Brooke in the small blind. Uh-oh. Brooke Leiter has picked up two aces. Oh, the mother of all poker hands. Unbelievable. He's in the small blind here. Well, Magnum P.I. is a great actor. I'll give him that. I mean, he is thinking this through. He's thinking, should I play this fast or should I just dig the hole, put the branches over it, and wait for the sucker to fall well, in? most people would raise with two aces before the flop fence. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But if you're going to just call here and slow play them, that means he's going to check on the flop, hoping his opponent bets, and then probably move all in, and it doesn't matter what comes out there on the flop. Call. He's going to well, slow play Well, that's what he's it. doing. He's just making the call here. He's a tricky player. Mildly dangerous because Michael's still behind you. Ace is the kind of hand that you want to play against one opponent normally. Uh, Michael with 10-4 can't play, so Andrews Hendrickson with king-queen. Oh, a aces. slow played against a pair of aces. Here comes the flop. Oh, boy, and this gives Andrews Queen's top pair with the king kicker. Brooke quickly checks here. He's going to throw the rope to Andrews Hendrickson, who's hit the queens with a very solid kicker, a king, of course. Well, you're right, Vince. What looks to be a great flop for Anders. Could be his demise. Anders coming out, and here it is. He's going to bet it. Yep. 150000 Brooke would love to make no, a no, Swedish no. meatball out of Anders right now. <laughs> and he's thinking, what's the best way to dice him? 150. 150. <laughs> oh. Pretty dangerous to slow play it once again. Notice the king or queen would beat him here. He looks back down. He makes sure he has the two aces. How much do you have left? Wants to make Anders feel like maybe he's four flushing. He's indecisive. It's all about perception at the table. It's all about throwing your opponent off. Brooke is a master at this today. Well, Anders has about 670,000 left, it looks like. Everything happening nicely for Brooke. I'll be surprised if he doesn't move all in here. He's going back into his summer stock. Come on in. Well, now he's going all in. Okay. Now the question is, is Anders going to be able to read him again as he did before when he came over the top of him with a deuce offsuit? He read him perfectly there. 
Well, this would be a miraculous getaway if he should be able to lay this down. I, don't th I think it's almost impossible with the amount invested already with what flopped with well, your kicker. It is very tough to get away. He is in a big trap. Well, you cannot possibly put your opponent on two aces or two kings because they didn't re-raise before the flop. And that is the, that's the art of deception at poker, not to play the normal way. You got to mix it up. This time, Rook mixed it up beautifully, well, and he's got the sucker on the rope. Andrew's fear is that his opponents flop three sixes or three deuces here. He's hoping he'd have a queen with a smaller kicker. Perhaps he has a flush draw. You can see he senses that his hand might be beat here. And if he makes this call, he'll be a four to one underdog to win this pot. I tell you, he is taking his time. Michael. He's done it, though, Mike. He's made the call. Well, he's not going to like it, Vince. Okay, they're going to turn up the cards. Look at this. The sweet actually showing emotion there. He is in a dismal place right now. Well, Vince, if he loses this pot, I don't really think you can fault him for the way he plays this pot. You just have to credit Brooke for slow playing with the two aces before the flop. Well, and you also got to thank goodness for the cards to come up that way. What a place for Brooke Leiter. He would become the chip leader at this point if he should win this hand and knock out the sweep. Anders looking for some paint here, that's for sure. Needs a king or a queen to take the lead. Here comes the turn card, 4th Street. Well, it's a six, Vince. Now, that's a oh. bad card for Anders because now he will not win the pot if a king comes up. He must catch a queen to make queens full to stay alive in this tournament. He has two outs and two outs only. Anders circling the drain right now. He needs a miracle. Will he get it? Here comes the river. He did not. No, nope, it's a nine. And that's going to do it for the Swedish player. Anders Henriksson. Uh, a very clever young man. Thank you. Only 24 years old. He's a great player. He's going to pick up $239,000. He's a fifth place finisher here at Atlantis. And Vince, I think you got to credit Brooke Leiter for the way he played those two aces. Just calling before the flop is the reason that he got all of Anders' chips there. If I catch cards like that, I might be tough to beat today. Well, the man from North Dakota has game. He is now our chip leader. We're down to four. Stay tuned. We in Poker Adventure. I'm Vince Van Patten alongside Mike Sexton. Well, we've lost two of the youngsters, the 18-year-old and the 24-year-old Swede, Anders Hendrickson. We are down to our final four. Back down to the felt on Steve from Canada. He's got ace-queen this time. And he makes a raise of 90,000. Now David Singer with ace-five and the button. Well, he's in position. We can see that he's dominated because of the WPT cam. He's going to make the call for 90,000. Brooke Leiter in the small blind with yes. Motown, Jack Five. Jackson Fives goes out. Michael Higgins, the Ohio State Buckeye, also lays his hand down. Can't play his King Seven. Two way action. Yes. Ace Queen versus Ace Five. Flop is Jack, Eight Deuce, all spades. And Steve has none of that and no spade. He checks it. David has made a flush draw because he has the five of spade, but still, it's not the kind of spade that you get excited about. No, very weak flush draw. Even when four spades are out there. But he sees the kid checking to him. He's got the button. He's got position. Will he take a stab here? Yes, he is going to bet a little bit. Yep, Test he, the waters. That's 100,000 here. And Steve, remember, just has ace queen. He doesn't have a spade in his hand. Tough call to make here. Now Steve suspects his ace queen is the best hand and makes the call. He is not going anywhere. Interesting. So off to the turn we go. It's a three of diamonds. No help. Well, again, Steve checks. Now David has a straight draw now, a wheel draw, as we say, as well as his flush draw. He also has the worst hand right now. Will he opt to take a free card here? But Vince, he is getting out some chips. <laughs> now, folks, this is the way a pro plays poker. He's betting not necessarily because he thinks he has the best hand, but because he senses weakness on his opponent. Well, it's a $300,000 bet. Well, he has really put the test to Steve Paul Ambrose now. Yeah. I mean, Steve may suspect that his ace queen is the best hand, but I'll tell you. It's a tough call to make here. It's 
What's the 22-year-old rookie going to do? He's going to lay it down. He can't take the pressure. No. Well, outplayed by the pro there, no doubt about it. Give David Singer credit for the way he played that hand. He stayed aggressive. He sensed weakness on his opponent's part, and he took advantage of it, Vince. A lot of people would tell you they never get nervous, but I get nervous. I don't like to lose. I was thinking maybe one of the reasons I've done well so far in this tournament is my rings. I have about 50 rings, and I switch them around depending on how I'm doing. And a few people think I wear the rings to be intimidating, but then if you look closely, they're all animals. Some of them cuddly, some of them sharks. But usually when I'm doing well, like I have been, I don't change them for a few days. Before I played poker, I was actually an environmental lawyer for my work at a nonprofit organization trying to work on water issues, trying to clean up the Long Island Sound. David Singer adapts very well to his opponents. David Singer's relentless and ruthless at the table. With David Singer, he's the player I think I'm going to double up through. People come from all different walks of life into poker. That's one of the things that makes it interesting. All different kinds of people playing the game together. Now, if you look in front of David, look at that luck charm he's got. He's got the frog there that was given to him by his girlfriend, and it has become his lucky charm, along with those rings. Well, you're right. His girlfriend Russia. Mandy in the house. She's a poker player herself. In fact, and played in this tournament here, Vince. Let's go back down to the table. It's on Brooke Leiter. Let's take a look at the WPT whole cam brought to you by Budweiser. Brooke's got a pretty good starting hand. King Queen offsuit. Well, you're right. King Queen in a four-handed game. Pretty good hand. 125. And he's going to raise it up to 125,000. Now the 18-year-old behind him, Michael Higgins. He's got a good hand as well. Ace-10 offsuit. And Michael has about 875,000 left. Raise. And he well, says raise. Well, Vince, the other three players all have over $2 million in peace. He makes it 300,000 to go. Steve with 6-5, a little suited connector. Does he want to get dangerous here? Nope, he goes out. David Singer with King Jack has to go out. Action on the original Razor Brook. Well, he's studying the stack size of his opponent. He sees his opponent's got less than 600,000 left. Does he want to gamble here with King Queen? Does he want to call a $175,000 raise? How much to call? 175. Call it. He says, yeah, I'll call. So it's King Queen for Brook, Ace 10 for Michael. We got Mr. Lucky so far. Brook Leiter going against the kid, the short stack. Oh, and a great flop oh. for Brooke. He's hit his pair of queens. He's got a big kicker. Now, how does he play it? His opponent's got about 600,000 left. A little bit less. Well, Brooke's been the master of the slow play tonight. It's paid off well. Look at the once again, he's going to set a trap. He checks. Now, will the kid go for it? He caught nothing on that flop. Well, he is going to bet here, Vince. Looks like he's getting out some chips. Oh, boy. So you'd almost think if he's going to make a bet at it, Vince. He's got to put it all out there, but he's not doing that. He's betting 250,000 is all. He's going for the holdup with absolutely nothing. And now back around to Brook. He does get the bet he wants. Would love to send this kid home to watch Barney. Well, you would think that Brook would just go ahead and set him in here, Vince. He wouldn't want to give me any free card that could beat you here. Not without a little performance bet. first, though, Mike, I might add. <laughs> I'm all in. There it is, all in. All you Hollywood guys stick together. <laughs> and, oh, Michael wants no part of it. Disgusted, has to lay that down quickly. And the trap play working beautifully today. Michael with 400 and some thousand left, wants to save it for a better spot. You just wonder if he'd have been a lot better off. I'm just going ahead and moving the 800,000 in before the flop, forcing his opponent to make a decision. Does he really want to play for all the money with just King High? Again, Brooke getting lucky on the flop, Vince. He's catching some cards and playing them well. And right now, our 18-year-old in very grave condition. He is short stacked with a little over 300,000 action on him. Well, he looks down at a nice hand here, Vince. He's got ace, queen of clubs. You think he'd just go ahead and put it all out there? 100. Well, he's going to go up to a $100,000 raise. Now, many guys when they're on a short stack like that would just go ahead and stick them all out there. Well, he would like to get some value here. He's got a big hand now. It's on Steve. He's got 3-5 offsuit. Can't possibly play. He goes out. David Singer could certainly play because he's got ace high. Doesn't want to play, though. And round up Michael's nemesis, Brooke Leiter, the big blind. He's got king nine of diamonds. Well, Vince, as we've seen, he's been hitting a lot of flops here. 
going to cost him 70,000 more to try to hit this one. And he's going to call it. He's going to gamble, see if he can catch a flop here. So let's see if Brook can get lucky again. Here come the first three. Oh, he's done it, Vance. He's oh, flopped two pair. He certainly Kings has. and nines. Oh, and he checks. He's the king of the trappers, this guy. And without hesitation, Michael, who has just an inside straight draw, oh. goes all in. Well, he's going to quickly get called here, no doubt about it. Oh, what a debacle here for Michael Higgins, spinning out of control right now. He needs a miracle. Need a check. Well, right now, this Ohio State Buckeye is going to have to catch a jack to make an ace high straight or two runners in some form of aces and queens to stay alive here. What an opportunity for Brooke Leiter to knock out another young player. He's in a great place. The 18-year-old needs a jack right now. Otherwise, it is back to the Cub Scout meeting. Could our second 18-year-old at this table bite the dust? Here we go with the turn. It's yeah. a queen. <laughs> so now Michael needs an ace, a queen, or a jack to win this pot. Oh. So this gives him more outs now. He would love to get this suck out. The dream of 1.4 million still intact. A four of clubs on the river. Well, that's going to do it. Michael Higgins from Proctorville, Ohio, our fourth place finisher. He's going to take home 327,000 for his efforts here this week. We are down to three. And Vince, so far, they've gone out right around the horn. Seat six, seat five, seat four. Will seat three be next to go? More high stakes tropical poker action as the WPT continues from the Bahamas after this. The Atlantis. And Vince, once again, we are witnessing the beauty of poker that anybody can win. We've got a top pro and David Singer still alive, as well as two amateur players living the dream. Don't forget the winner's going to take home close to $1.4 million. And this with the chip count of these players, all of them having over $2 million, it's anybody's game from here. Action's going to be on Brook with the button. Race. He looks down at ace five. He says raise. Certainly, with you got to feel like Brook is running the best of these three at the final table so far. He is doing everything right, and he's going to make it 125000 into Steve Paul Ambrose, who's got a junky little 10 deuce. He's got a hand we call the Doyle Brunson. A hand that was named after Doyle because he won the world title two years in a row with exactly that hand, a 10 deuce. What is he thinking about here, Vince? It's been raised to him. Is he going to try a little larceny? I raise. He yes, is going to re raise here. This is incredible to re raise with a 10 deuce. I guarantee you. Whatever happens here, you know Doyle Brunson sitting in his lazy boy back at home with a big grin on his face. <laughs> well, that's a $350,000 raise. David quickly folding. And now around to Brook. He's made that ace five shrivel up a little bit. <laughs> well, he is putting the pressure on this 34-year-old from West Fargo, North Dakota. He's going to throw it away. So Steve Paul Ambrose earning that pot. He just plundered that pot. Oh, there's no better feeling in poker than to earn a pot with the worst hand by re-raising your opponent. Well, Mike, you know, these players have traveled a long, hard path getting to this final table. But as you know, judging from our frequent flyer miles, we have traveled a long, hard path getting to the WPT events. Well, when you make the world your poker room, it may seem like a nonstop vacation. But for some of the players on tour, that's not always the case, as Courtney Friel found out in this week's WPT Academy. Imagine a trip that took you from Paris and the Bahamas to Atlantic City and Vegas. Sounds like fun. But for players who travel the world to play on the WPT, life on the road is not always a sure bet. I love being in all the different places, but I hate the pack. When you travel to some of these destinations, you feel, boy, I, I don't want to take any chances the first day. After traveling this far, two hours in the tournament, I make a play and I'm out. You really feel stupid. A few years ago, it used to be there's the same 100, 200 players playing the circuit. Now it's a lot of new players coming, which is great. It makes the prize pools much bigger, but it makes it also much, much tougher to get to the final table and win. When my girlfriend and I got together, she said she wanted to travel the world. Well, now we have, but she feels like she never went anywhere because we're always inside the casinos. So what we've tried to do in each venue is come a day early. So we'll spend a day traveling the city where the casino is. I think it's definitely a psychological advantage if you've already done something positive with your partner. Odds are when you go to a poker tournament, you're not going to make the final table, so I figured I'd have more time to spend outside on the beach. Some of them say, well, if I get knocked out, 
then I'm going to have my trip. I'm going, well, it doesn't work out that way. They get knocked out. They're really not much fun to be around. I think it's good that we do have this chance to see some of these other places. A lot of us would never leave Las Vegas if we didn't have this opportunity. With that, the antes and blinds are going up. $5,000 antes, and the blinds are going to be twenty-five and 50000 Mike. Well, that's 90000 All players have to put in for every three hands that are dealt. And you get to step it up a notch. All right, action on. The 22-year-old Steve he looks down at a nice hand, ace-queen. Hard to play much faster than he did the last hand, Vince, but he's going to raise this one, too. Comes in for 150000 Okay, on David Singer. And David's got a decent hand. Got a little wired pair of threes. Well, this is the kind of hand that a lot of players like to see flops with. And some just re-raise and come right over the top of the small pairs. David opting to call here. Well, he's not gotten aggressive with the fives earlier, and now not the threes. Just going to call. Now it's on Brook, who has got 10-7. He's already invested, so he says, I'll call the remainder. Well, there's 365000 out there. Cost him 100000 to call. So he's going to call it. We have a family pot. Three-way action. Here comes the flop. Flop comes king, 6-5. No help to anybody. It's on David. Actually, we know because the Budweiser hole cam, he's out in front. He checks it. Brooke checks right behind him. And who is this imposter, Steve? 255. Once again, he's going to bet. Well, give this kid credit, Vince. He has taken the bull by the horns here, three-handed. He sticks in $255,000. He is betting again without the best hand. Back around to David Singer with his pair of threes. Nothing really hitting for him on the flop. What's he thinking about? No, it is a very tough call to make. I can't imagine he would make a call, Vince. You don't want to just call, give your opponent a chance to beat you. You think you have the best hand or a hand that he might lay down, you might come over the top of him here. So he's testing him. He's putting chips out in front of him. Does he mean business here? And he's putting out a lot of chips here. How does he know? Look at this. It's going to wow. be a raise. He's gone up 400000 in addition. That's phenomenal. Brooke quickly folding. And that is going to sting the 22-year-olds. Well, David's thought process was he knows if he raises this, if his opponent doesn't have a king in his hand, it's going to be very difficult for him to make this call, whatever he has. One slip up, you're out of this event. Third place, 436000 And the winner close to $1.4 million. So much pressure right now. Steve glancing over at David. Knows he's capable of making a play in this spot. But still, when you just have ace high, your opponent has check raised you here on the turn. He can't like it. Can he back this up? No, he's going to go out. Well, Steve is going to lay the hand down. <laughs> and Vince, you just have to chalk that one up to experience. Now, let's be honest, Vince. All the viewers that watch week in and week out, and they come up to us and say, you know, I can play as good as those guys. I should be at a final table on the World Poker Tour. Let me ask you, folks, could you honestly have won that pot if you were sitting in David Singer's seat? I doubt it. That was a brilliant play by the great David Singer. I'm Courtney Friel, and here's a recap of the fun in the sun so far. The fun turned to fury in the very first hand. Um, as young Ozzy Shakes saw his pocket aces get blown away by trips, leaving him on a raft with no sail. Then, North Dakota amateur Brooke Leiter used crafty play and good luck to snag both Swedish newcomer Anders Hendrickson and Ohio State freshman Michael Higgins. With established pro David Singer and 22-year-old Canadian Steve Paul Ambrose matching wits, the quest for the $1.3 million first prize is far from over. Vince, we're seeing some incredible poker here. Guys making move, re-raising, taking pots away from their opponent without the best hand. That is just terrific poker. Let's go back down to the felt. Action is going to be on Brook Leiter. With a button in front, he throws away King-5. Steve, in the small blind with a 7-6, is going to limp in. He's going to call. David Singer with Jack-10 in the big blind. Will he get aggressive? And he's going to raise it just 75000 though. Yeah, no cheap flops. But Steve, he's not going away. He quickly calls it. So it's 76 trombones for Steve Paul Ambrose. 
and a jack 10 for David Singer. And notice Steve has flopped second pair. He's got two sixes. He checks them. And nothing hitting for David Singer. He's before the flop. And he's going to bet on the flop. That's 100,000. Back over to Steve who caught a little piece of this. And no, he's not going anywhere. He's made this call. Well, notice the look he gave to David there before he made that call. He said, you really have any of that? I don't think so. OK, here comes the fourth street. And a four comes off on the turn. Now this gives Steve a gut shot straight draw as well as the two sixes and he checks. Yes, he does. He yields once again to David Singer. But and David's checked as well. Steve has got to feel like he's got the best hand right now. And we're off to the river. And the king comes off. Still doesn't help David Singer. Well, again, Steve checks. Well, David figures the only way he has a chance to win this pot is to bet at it. So he is reaching for chips. Remember, he only has Jack High. What a professional veteran's move right here. Hitting nothing on the last card, but has the guts to bet this. He is going for it. He's betting 325,000. Know Does not want to give up the pot. You got to respect the nerve of David Singer. Well, he is going to put the pressure on the youngster right here. Can he blow the young player out of this? What Steve is wondering is what's going on. I bet on the flop. He checked on the turn. Does he really have a king in his hand? Did he spike a king at the river to beat me here? Steve looking over at the New Yorker, checking his man out. This would be a tremendous call if he should make it. If you put the pieces of the puzzle together, you got to feel like the guy either hit the king or he has nothing. That's exactly right, but there's no reason why he couldn't have hit a king. This is the ultimate game of smoke and mirrors. David Singer proving that, making a nice bet. Will it be successful? Call. He's made the call. It's a great call by the young player. Jack, huh? Devastated for David Singer. Oh, ho, ho. He gives it the fist, and why not? A tough call, a very good call. I mean, David Singer tried to win that pot by betting at it. He got looked up by the youngster. Same way to learn that kid. Not an easy call to make. Well, the crowd cheering, good call. And they're right about that. Tough call to make with third pair down there when it's 325,000 to you. People have asked me what I'd do with the money if I win. Never really thought it would be possible, so I hadn't put a whole lot of thought into it. I brought my mom, sister, and some friends, and they're all in the audience cheering for me. You know, it's a little embarrassing when you win a pot and they all start yelling and cheering. It's kind of fun. I enjoy it. Tremendous poise by the 22-year-old. And because of that, he's now our chip leader oh. with nearly $3 million in chips. David and Brooke both sitting at around $2 million. All right, back to the table on David Singer, stinging from that last hand. He's got ace, jack of diamonds this time. That's a powerful hand in a three-handed poker game. See what David does with it. The environmental lawyer playing professional poker for nine years. David Singer, a staple in the poker profession. He's going to raise it. Comes in for 125000 again. And now Brooke Leiter, the man from Fargo. He's got King Jack in the small blind. Another good starting hand. He's going to make the call. And the young man, Steve Paul Ambrose. Well, he's got a 9-7 this time, Vince. Will he speculate? Guy loves to see the flop. Here he is. He's going to make a call. Well, he's going to call again. Come the first three. Oh, lightning. Look at this flop. Oh. Steve has flopped a full house. And Brooke quickly checks his hand. His fantasy time here for Steve. 175. He's going to come out and bet it. Usually when you have a monster, you want to check that. Especially to an aggressive player like a David Singer sitting on the button. David is out. And now Brooke, nothing hitting on this flop. What Brooke is thinking, Vince, is, would this guy have really let out? You know, if that guy really had something, wouldn't he check it to David? Yeah, you're thinking he would I never bet it. I think he's got anything. I think he's just making a move here. Grace. He's going to punch it up. He does not believe him. 175 more. He's going to try to take the pot away from Steve. Little does he know he's got less than a 1% chance to win this pot. Oh, he's raised an additional 175000 So the tactic of Steve actually going to work here. He's sucking his man in here. And Steve just calls him. Wow. Doesn't want to lose him now. Here comes the turn. Oh, and the king comes on. Oh, that could be a nightmare there for Brooke because he hits his kings. 
Vince, this is like deep sea fishing. You got the fish on the hook and he's just bobbing up and down out of the water. Oh, man. And you're reeling him in. This could get very ugly. On Brook to act first. Can he slow down here? You hit your hand. 400. He is going to bet $400,000. According to the way he's thinking, that Steve would never lead out had he flopped three sevens. What do you have left? He doesn't put him on that hand. He, I'm sure he thinks his two kings are the best hand right now. 1.3, maybe. I'm all in. And there it is, all in, he says. And you see, Brooke, he doesn't like that one iota. Yeah. Everything backfiring for Brooke. All on the assumption that this kid would not have bet if he had a seven on the flop. So therefore, he sticks around, tries to take the pot, and then hits his card on the turn. It's just an ultimate nightmare. Brooke Leiter, his tournament life on the line right here. He makes the call. He's not drawing dead. He's got about a 5% chance to win. He can catch one of two kings that are left in the deck to win the pot, but those chances are slim. I don't know if you would lead out with a seven. You heard what he said, folks. I can't believe you'd lead out with a seven there. Well, he wouldn't. He had to have a seven nine full boat. <laughs> oh. Fiance Christie sweating her man out. Well, he is wincing in pain, Bench. You can oh. just see it. Taking his time, you can't blame him. I think he got a king. So do I. See, he thinks he has kicker problems. A good kicker. That's the great deception. Even if he did have a king and a bigger kicker, wouldn't he have raised again before the flop three-handed? That's what he's thinking through. Doesn't put him on a seven. Look at this great lay down. Well, he does lay down the two kings. Very solid. And right now, he's lecturing himself as, why did I make the check raise on the flop? Why didn't I just throw it away? A 22-year-old from Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. Massive chip leader with that one. The beautiful Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas. Three players remain. Winner's going to take home close to $1.4 million. But right now, Steve Paul Ambrose with about $4.3 million. David Singer in second with about two. And Brooke Leiter with about a million. And action's going to be on David Singer this time, looking down at 10-9. Well, he's going to raise it on the button. Makes it 150000 to go. And now Brooke Leiter from Fargo. He's got Queen Jack offsuit in the small blind. Nice lay down on that last hand. Got himself in that mess, but got away from it. So he still has a few chips, just under a oh. million dollars. He makes his call. And now our chip leader, Steve Paul Ambrose, he with King Nine offsuit. Seems like he's won a million pots when this three-handed game, and he hadn't had over 10 high yet. That's going to cost him another 100000 to make the call, but he does it. And again, David Singer raises on the button, and both players call him. This is a consistent theme here. So a nice pot brewing. Let's see a flop. The flop comes 9-6-4. Both Steve and David a flop top pair. Yes, they have, but David Singer with some kicker problems. Action on Brook first. Nothing hitting for him on this flop. Well, he's checking. And now Steve with the pair of nines and the big kicker. He's going to check. He's going to try to trap here, it looks like. He didn't try to trap with a full house. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he's going to try to trap with a pair of nines. And David with the button in front. Very dangerous position. He's hit his pair of nines. Well, Vince, I can't imagine that he could possibly check this hand. You would not think so. You've got top pair. Your opponents have checked to you. You wouldn't want to give him a free card that could beat the two nines. And David no, David is, is going to bet 325000 Yes, he is falling into the trap. Brooke Leiter, nothing materializing for him. Then he does lay it down. And now around to Steve. How much do you have Check top pair, and he says, how much you got, David? 1.5, maybe? He says, I really want to break you, David. He's got a great chance to do just that right here, Vince. Remember, Steve started this pot with well over 4 million in chips. So he's got him covered by a long shot. Nothing more he'd rather do than eliminate David Singer and take total command of this heads-up battle. All in. Well, it goes all in. Yep. He's done it. He's check raised all his money. If you're going to call a raise before the flop with King Nine, it comes nine six four. 
You got to go for it. And now David looking like he was just hit by the old stun gun. His tournament life on the line with this decision. Oh, Vince, I just can't imagine you can get away from this hand if you're in David Singer's spot. And I say that because his opponent had a chance to re-raise before the flop sitting in last position. If he had a big pair, that's what he would have done. So you can't put him on an over pair in this spot. That call. Oh, he makes the call. Well, David's making the call, so here we go. He is in dire straits right now as they turn up the cards. What a position for the young 22-year-old Steve Paul Ambrose. The young kid absolutely thrilled by this. Well, Vince, a few weeks ago at Borgata, David Singer came to the final table with a chip lead. It was a total nightmare that night. He went out in sixth place. Tonight, nothing great's happened for him either. He could go out in third place here. Now look at this. Brooke Leiter getting up from the table. The difference between third and second is over $250,000. He realizes that. He's saying, please, just have Steve's hand hold up. I'll make a quarter of a million dollars more if David goes away. David Singer's going to have to catch two running cars to make a straight or a 10 to take the lead here. Both players have a pair of nines, but David is outkicked. The Paul Ambrose, well over a four to one favorite to take down this pot and take total command of this tournament. Here is fourth street. Well, an eight comes off. Now that does give David Singer a straight draw. Gives him four more outs, as we say. Any of the four sevens would now win the pot for him, as well as a 10. That is right. A few more outs for David Singer, a little more hope. It's got to be a 10 or a 7. No other cards will do it for him. He needs the big suck out. Otherwise, it is over from our man from New York, David Singer. River card coming up. Oh. He's caught it. It's a 7. Oh. Vince, he's done it. He's hit lightning in the jar. He's made this straight on the river and captured over a $4 million pot. <laughs> and Steve could not even look at the river card. David Singer finally getting a little luck there. Sucks out on the river to take that pot. What a turn of events. It is now David Singer, our new chip leader. A huge break for David Singer right there. And I know what he's thinking. You know, I'm due for a break at one of these final tables. Yeah. I finally got one. Well, with that pot, we have a new chip leader, David Singer, with close to $4.2 million. Vince, you could also say we have the man who's regaining the chip lead that he started this final table at. That is true. And the antes and blinds going up once again. $10,000 antes. 40 and 80 blind. Let's go back down to the table on Brooke. The man from Fargo. Oh, wow. Look at this. He's got a pair of kings wired. Two kings on the button. You got to love it. Just a tremendous starting hand. 150. Well, he says 150,000, but he has to make it 160. You must at least double the size of the big blind if you're going to raise it. And that's what he's doing. Nice raise into Steve. And Steve also with a pretty good hand. Mid pair, pair of sevens. Just took a hit the last hand. Well, he saw Brooke make the minimum raise. I raise. Well, he is going to re-raise with the two sevens. Brooke has got to be loving this. Uh, Brooke is on the short stack. Started this hand with only about 800,000. And he bets a cool half a million. David going out and over the top hook says all in. Hi, Kyle. Well, Steve is pot committed here. He's going to make the call. He yeah, has a great opportunity here for Brooke Leiter. Well, remember back to the first hand at this final table, Vince. Steve took two sevens. He cracked out. He shakes two aces. Sent him home packing. <laughs> you can't do it twice. Can he send the guy home with two kings with the same two sevens? Pretty amazing. He'll need to do it again here. Stay tuned. We're coming right back with the conclusion in just a moment. Brooke Leiter with a pair of kings up against Steve Paul Ambrose with a pair of sevens. Brooke is all in. Well, Brooke about a four to one favor to win this pot and double up to stay alive in this competition. And in back to back hands, it's possible Steve could double up David Singer and now double up Brooke Leiter. Here comes the first Oh, three. a king right oh. on the flop. Flops the set. It's not over, though, because Steve could backdoor a straight or backdoor a flush, meaning he could catch two runners to make a straight or two running cards to make a flush. That's what he must do unless it comes 7-7. Needs a couple runners. This could double up Brooke, and he could use it right now. Here comes the turn. Well, the turn's a nine. That's going to do it. Steve is drawing dead, as we say. There's no card he can catch at the river to win the pot. Tomorrow, is it? So Brooke Ladder sits back down. He has doubled up. A couple bad hands in a row for the 22-year-old Steve Paul Ambrose. He was the chip leader. Starting to bleed here a little bit. He first doubled up David Singer. 20. Now he's doubled up Brooke Ladder. Nice. 
But with that pot, Brooke Ladder moves into second chip position. And Vince, just a moment ago, Steve Paul Ambrose was in command of this tournament. He would have had six and a half million dollars in chips had his King Nine stood up against a 9-10. It did not, and he is now in the bottom of the totem pole. Well, the poker fate pretty wicked here in the Bahamas. Action's going to be on Steve, the 22-year-old out of Canada. Looking down at King Deuce of Diamonds, he says, I'm going to raise it. Two hundred thousand dollars to go. David Singer looks down at Ace Nine. Pretty good hand in a three-handed poker game. Yes, indeed. Does he want to just call this bet, or does he want to come over the top? He opts to just call here. He takes the conservative route. Brook Leiter can't compete, goes out. So we have two-way action. David with Ace Nine. Steve with King Deuce. Flop comes Ace Eight Seven with two diamonds. Well, buckle up here. David checks the two aces. Steve has flopped a flush draw. Yes, he has four to the flush. But David Singer out in front with a pair of aces. Well, we can see some fireworks here. Steve has a little bit less than 1.6 million total in chips right now. 500. He's going to bet a half a million. That's what he's doing. A stiff bet on the come. Will this shake loose, David Singer? He's got aces with a nine kicker, of course. What David is thinking, he's thinking, wait a second, did this, this guy hit an ace as well with a bigger kicker? He did raise before the flop went up to 200,000, and would he bet it if he had that? Or would he try to trap? Playing out all the hands in his mind. He knows the young man is capable of betting when he hits hands. We've seen him do that before with the full house earlier. Well, if you're going to play... You think you just go ahead and raise it right here. In case his opponent had a pair of tens, you wouldn't want to just call here and let him try to catch a ten for free on you. That's a very good point. And David Singer. Yeah, he is doing it, Vince. Yeah. He's raising it a million more. Oh, look at that disgusted look on Steve. Yeah, Steve knows that's virtually all his chips. He's got about a million eighty-five thousand left. It's gonna cost him a million dollars to call this raise. So essentially, he's gonna have to put all his chips in the pot if he's gonna play. Look at David Singer going into a monkey see, monkey do pose there. Doesn't want to see anything, doesn't want to be read. Just let him know what happens tomorrow. What a very dejected Steve. The longer he takes to make a decision, I'm sure David feels like he for sure has the best hand right now. You're right, he's coming out of the turtle hiding. I think I forced myself to come. Just an agonizing decision for the young 22-year-old Advanced with two and a half million dollars in the pot right now. You know, getting two and a half to one odds on your money. Hard to believe he can throw a flush draw away. Come on. He's done it. He's made the call. Well, he's shaking his head no. He's not a happy camper. 95,000. David quickly calls him. Now notice that David has the ace of diamonds. And remember, Brooke threw the queen of diamonds away. So a couple of the diamonds he cannot use now. Steve up from his seat, shaking his head. He needs a little luck here. It sure does, Vince. David Singer over a 70% favorite to win this pot. He's got the ace of diamonds. Steve has to catch exactly one, one diamond. diamond, Vince. If he catches two of them, David would have the higher flush. Diamond, Brooke hoping to celebrate a loss by one of these gentlemen. All right, let's, see the turn All right, well, let's go to the turn card. Oh. Well, another ace comes off. What that means is if the nine of diamonds comes up, David would have a full house, and Steve's flush wouldn't be any good. So Steve cannot catch the nine of diamonds to win. Brooke threw the queen of diamonds away, so his outs are slim. So he is up against it right now. But he hit the four diamonds on the river, Matt. He caught the flush. Another beat here with an outdraw. Amazing. Oh, that is just complete ugliness there for David Singer. He is stunned again, outdrawn it to River at the final table on the World Poker Tour. Nearly 3.7 million in that pot just a little while ago. David made a big outdraw on Steve. And right now, the tide has reversed completely. Steve put the big outdraw on him at the river. Don't try to rationalize fairness in this game. There is no such thing. We're playing poker, Mike. You talk about the Bermuda Triangle poker game. You're looking at it right here. Every hand a mystery. Every hand an outdraw. Replay is still remain. This is craziness. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action in just a moment.
You're watching some of the best poker on television from the world's most exotic locations. There's more WPT action to come, so stick around. Caribbean poker adventure continues in the Bahamas. Three players remain. Well, Vince, we're on an island, and the tide continues to turn here. The chip leader is just bouncing back and forth. All right, action. It's going to be on David Singer. Who goes out with his 4 3. Well, Brooks is in a small blind. He's picked up a pair of eights. Race. Brooks says, I'm going to raise this. 300,000. Makes it 300,000 to go. Into the Canadian, Steve Paul Ambrose. He's got Queen Jack this time, offsuit. And he's got 80,000 in the big blind. He's got plenty of chips. He's in position against his opponent. The kind of hand that many players call a trouble hand, meaning that if you make the call and then hit either a queen or a jack on the flop, your opponent might have that hand beat or have you out kicked. Well, he is the chip leader thanks to that diamond on the river against David Singer. Things have turned around. Well, he's made the call. As it is, he's got two over cards against the under pair. Let's see what happens. So we got a pair of eights versus queen jack. Here come the first three. Oh, a dream flop for Brooke Leiter. Oh He's my. flopped top set. He is the best possible hand you can have at this moment. And he checks. Oh, why not? Dig the hole, put the branches and twigs over it, hoping that the sucker falls in. Will it be Steve? Steve only has Four queen hundred. high, but he is going to bet it, Vance. Oh, he gets the sucker to bet. And look at the wince job. Brooke just winces like, oh, I couldn't stand that. Poor me. <sighs> oh, beautiful <laughs> sigh. Oh, man. Now we're going to look back down and see if he has the 3-8. Uh, Hard to believe, I know. Pacino has nothing on Brook Leiter. All right. Oh, hey, take it easy now. <laughs> call. Well, he is making the call. He doesn't raise it here. There you go. He's a professional liar. He's good at it. Well, he's going to continue throwing the rope to his opponent. Yes, sir. -y. Walking the dog, as we say. Let your opponent keep betting, especially if you got the nuts. Oh, and a queen comes off. Oh, buckle now, up this here. This could spell trouble for Steve here because he now has top pair. This is the same thing that happened earlier in reversal when Steve had the full boat. Well, again, he checks the three-eighths. Put out the rat bait. Well, a moment ago, Steve thought he was stealing on the flop when he bet. Then he got called. Now he's got to think he might have the best hand here, Vince, when the queen comes off. There's no card he can catch on the river to win this pot. So any money he puts in the pot now is just goodbye. Oh, man, goodbye for that right there. Well, he there's bets. a half million that goes. And Brooke. Mullen. There he goes with the all-in, finally. Complete devastation for Steve. Look at that. The head has gone down. How much more? Well, he says, how much is it? Now, Brooke has about 750000 left. Eventually, got to recognize... There's over three million in the pot right now. Hard to believe he could throw it away for 750,000 more. No, you're correct about after that. After hitting two queens. That's getting awful big. Almost impossible. He is in complete meltdown, <laughs> and we get to watch it. The former DJ from Fargo, North Dakota, in a great place with his set right now. And Steve, for a 22-year-old, is starting to look haggard. Well, he's shaking his head. Of course, he was doing that a moment ago against David Singer. And he hit a diamond on the river to make a flush. Unfortunately for him, this time there's no card he can catch on the river to win the pot. And as a poker player, that's your worst nightmare. Putting in money on the turn when you're drawn completely dead. Oh, I should have checked behind him. Meanwhile, Brooke, with a good lighting going on here with the sun, just praying for a call. Well, Vince, the sun is going down here. Yep. These guys taking a long time to play. I call. Oh, he makes the call. He knows he's beat. I nice said call. Crazy yeah. baby. So I got here. This Sam got me here. Oh, look at this. Brooks says, this is how I got here. He is so excited. He gets up. He knows he has won this huge pot. Well, nearly $4 million in this pot. And Vince, we're playing musical chairs of the chip leader here. Back and forth and round and round we go. Where the trophy and the title are going to stop, nobody knows. That's oh, for sure. Yeah. Brooks saying, the eights in my hand. This is oh, destiny. Boy. I'm going to take the 1.4 tonight. Well, he started with the two snowmen, and they melted down Steve Paul Ambrose from Canada right there. And we have got a new chip leader. His name is Brooke Leiter, the Marlon Brando of the poker circuit, a great actor. He's in control. 
Well, he's got to be so thrilled right now. Got into this tournament through a $62 satellite, going after close to $1.4 million. Action's right back on Brooke Leiter. And look at this, Vince. Oh, boy. He's picked up two aces on the very next deal. Just tremendous. We're seeing the aces pop up all afternoon. Again, he goes into his wincing mode. <laughs> 200. <laughs> and he makes it 200,000 to go. Not going to slow play this. Now, Steve, in the small blind, he's got 10-7 offsuit. He goes out. And David Singer is going to be let loose, too. He had only a seven do, so the ace is going to waste there a little bit. Well, he shows them the two aces, too, Vince. And then pick up the hand. That's something my friend Mike Sexton hates. Why give him a break, you say? <laughs> All right, action's going to be on Steve Paul Ambrose. This time with the button, he looks down at a big hand. Ace, queen of spades. Oh, powerful hand. 225. Not going to slow play. Goes up to 225,000. And speaking of big hands, oh boy, David Singer has found two kings in the small blind and yeah. just calls, Vince, does not re-raise. He's trying to camouflage the strength of his hand. He's changing gears, as we say. Let's see if it works out for him. Brooke going out with king five, so slow playing David Singer with kings. What action we're seeing? Big pot brewing here. So it's two kings for David, ace queen for Steve. Well, the flop comes, queen jack four, and we're going to see some fireworks here because Steve has top pair and top kicker. David has the over pair. Got the over pair, slow played it. He's checked this. He's going to try to trap. Steve with top pair, raised before the flop. 350. There he goes. The $350,000 bet out of Steve. David setting him up so beautifully. David has a little over 1.1 million left. I think you just go ahead and scoot him in there now, but we'll see what he does. Yep, that's what he's doing, Vance. Yep. He's going all in. You certainly can't blame him for that. And there he makes the call. They turn over the cards. Oh, you see the disgusted look on Steve's face. He truly thought he had the best hand there. And right now, David Singer, a four to one favorite to double up. He is in great shape. Nice hand. He's got to dodge an ace or a queen. Not over yet, though. Not over yet. David Singer's been around poker a long time. He knows anything can happen. Ace is getting cracked on hand number one right here at this final table. Again, you see Brooke over on the rail there. He's saying, uh-oh, this guy's going to stick around. I want to see an upset here. David's hand should no hold up. This would not break the kid, but he would be in severe trouble, of course, down to his last three, 400,000, I believe. So here comes the turn. It's an ace. Wow. Steve has done it to David one more time, at least so far. What a turn of events. Brooke clenching his fist. Now for David Singer to stay alive in this tournament, he's got to catch a king or catch a 10. That would give him a straight. Remember, Brooke folded a king. So that takes one of David's outs away from him. So he's got one king and four tens. That's all he's got. Here's the river card. And it's a queen. Steve hit two cards that would beat David Singer. First the ace and then the queen. What a bloodbath for David Singer. Not the way you want to go out, Mike. Unbelievable luck for David Singer here at this final table. He's got to be wondering what is going on here. Twice he had the guy all in. Man had to make a flush at the river once and then take an ace queen and crack two kings with two to go. He did it. I had a feeling all day it was coming down to me and you for some reason. Stick to your stomach? Not right now, but I'm sure I will be. I'm not very happy. It's nothing new. That's poker. It's, uh, it's gotta be the most that's the way it goes. You play your best, and you can't control what happens after you get the money in. Absolutely incredible what we're seeing happen here tonight at this final table. Hand after hand after hand, major outdraws for guys to stay alive in this tournament. And right now, we are down to two players at the Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas. An amazing money presentation. Right. So show us the money. Well, here they come. The bevy of beauties from the Bahamas bringing out the cash right now. Yes, now these are the Atlantis skin diving girls. Oh, boy. Well, they have three reasons why a lot of people come down to the Bermuda Triangle. Very bondish. Well, there's over two million reasons behind them sitting on the table now that these two guys came down here, that's for sure. They're going after life-changing money. Head to head, stay tuned. Convinced the sun may be setting in the Bahamas, but it's shining on the two guys vying for this title. Well, they're going after huge dollars here today. And Brooke Leiter right now is the chip leader with close to $4.1 million. And Steve Paul Ambrose from Canada, the 22-year-old, has about 3.2.
And the incredible part is events. Both these players got in by winning a satellite. Right. One for $62, one for 102, and yet they're taking out over $2 million between them. All right. First hand action on Steve. 200. Looks at a jack six of clubs. He says, I'm going to make it 200 grand to go. He's going to be aggressive and raise it, but Brooke quickly calls him with the jack eight. Two handed. You got to open up the game that much more. Both players know it. Let's see the flop. Well, the flop comes king nine seven with two spades. Action on Brooke. Well, Brooke with the inside straight draw checks it. And Steve, nothing hitting on the flop. Is he going to make a stab at this pot, though? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's going to continue the charade with a bet. Yep, bet's a quarter of a million. Back on Brooke with just an inside straight draw. Brooke does have the gut shot straight draw. Ten would make him a straight. Brooke has the kind of hand that you want to bet at the pot, I think, rather than call. If you're going to check and call, in my view, you should have bet to start with. Well, we've seen players before. Sometimes they call to later on take the pot if they don't hit. He is going to make this call. Well, he has made the call. So let's see what develops. Over 900,000 in the pot. Here comes the fourth street. Well, a five comes off. Now this gives Brooks a two-way straight draw. A six would give him a straight as well as a ten. He checks it. And notice that Steve has made a gut shot straight draw. An eight would give him a straight. And it's checked behind him. Steve not going anywhere with that. And the river card. Three of clubs. No help to either player. This is the kind of pot that whoever fires at is probably going to win it. Now will Brooke take a shot at this pot? Nope. Brooke checks. The only way Steve can win this pot is to bet at it. But remember, he just has a jack six. He raised before the flop got called. He bet on the flop. He got called. See, he's going to bet 350,000. What a gutsy play. He's going to be successful with it. Yep, Brooke lays down the hand. And Steve calls mom, Kathy, and sister Kirsten rooting on their young man. Chalk one up to Steve Paul Ambrose for being aggressive and firing on the river, Vince. Had he checked at the river, he would have lost that pot. Well, Vince, this student who's studying chemistry and economics took one step closer to stuffing Brooke down the test tube by winning that pot with a bet. All right, action back down on Brooke Leiter from Fargo. This time looking down at Jack Four. Call. Well, he's going to make the call. He limps in on the button. And the college kid, Steve Paul Ambrose, got a pretty good hand King 10 but he says no well that's a hand you might raise with after your opponent limped in but Steve got the chip lead now so he says just give us a flop two Queens and a six first to act Steve uh, he's gonna lead out and bet now with the King high that's ninety five thousand dollars into Brooke Brooke says no Moss and just like that Steve Paul Ambrose taking that pot so far these guys have fought two rounds both have gone to the Canadian here Steve Paul Ambrose. Well, the chip stacks about the same. Steve Paul Ambrose with about 3.8 million. Brooke Leiter from Fargo with about 3.4. Well, a dream going to come true for one of these amateurs, that's for sure. Action on Steve. This time looking down at a Queen 10 offsuit. Oh. Any calls? Now on Brooke, and he quickly says raise. He's got King Jack in his hand. Good poker instincts by Brooke here. He feels if his opponent didn't raise before the flop, his King Jack is the best hand, and indeed he's correct. Makes it 440,000 to go. Yeah, a healthy raise, Vince, of 360,000. Now does Steve want to stay involved here? He's going to make the call. Yes, he he's is. got the chip lead. He's got position. He's going to gamble with the Queen 10. So 900,000 in the pot right now. It's King Jack for Brooke. Queen 10 for Steve. Here comes the flop. Oh, man, look at this. It's Jack 9 deuce. Well, top man. pair for Brooke. Brooke has top pair. Steve flopped an open end straight draw. Red alert time. Brooke checking his hand. Top pair with a big kicker. When he's betting 300,000. It's not a very big bet into a $900,000 pot. Just a tempting bet. And that's what Steve is trying to put together here. Steve with the open-ended straight draw. I mean, it's a cheap way for Steve to be able to draw here, I think. I mean, I can't imagine Steve's thinking about throwing this hand away. There's $1.2 million out there, cost him $300,000 to call, and he's got an open-end straight draw. 
Steve Paul Ambrose from Waterloo, Canada. A student studying chemistry and economics. He wins this tournament. He can put his economics into play, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Nearly 1.4 million to the winner. Look at this, Vince. He's getting out a lot more chips other than that 300,000. We've seen Steve win pots time and time again today without having the best hand. So he understands the concept of betting and how important it is. 1.5 total. He's making it a million and a half dollars to go. Total. On the come, open-ended straight draw. Well, he suspected that that small bet by Brooke didn't represent that strong of a hand. Little does he know Brooke has the top pair here. And now you see Brooke, what he's wondering is, does this guy really have me beat? Can he beat these jacks? I think he thinks he's in front. I mean, wouldn't Steve have raised before the flop if he had him beat with a jack with a bigger kicker? Well, there's a potential flush on the board, a potential straight on the board. Hmm. I think you have me covered, don't you? Yes, he does, bro. That is correct, sir. I've got another one point. Well, as the cards nine. lie, they put all the money in the pot. There's no more betting. Brooke would be about a three to two nine. favorite to win this pot. So he does have the best hand, but he doesn't know it. Even though your instincts tell you he might be out in front, it's still scary. Very scary, especially when you're playing for $1.4 million. He's thinking to himself, this ain't no Fargo home game. <laughs> this has gotten roughed up here a little bit. The boys in my poker league back home don't play this That's tough. That's right. Probably slow played a big hand. <clears throat> Queens? I don't think you would. How would you smooth call my raise if you had bigger than jacks? Mm -hmm. Brooke Leiter and with the decision of his lifetime. What is he going to do? Well, he's got about three million left, Vince. Cost him 1.3 million to call here. I'm all in. He's going all in. Oh boy, yes he has. <laughs> well, he has done it. Just a big draw. I call. I have to call. And Steve says, I have to call. I've got too big a draw. And this is it. Well, this could be it. Bad hand if Steve out. outdraws his opponent here, he'll be our champion. Steve is going to be trying to catch an eight or a king to make a straight. A queen would give him the best hand right now. And they shake hands. Brooke in a nice position. Now, he would not break Steve if his hand should hold up, but it would be pretty close. Well, this is what it's come down to, folks. They played for five days. Uh, all this money on the line, a WPT title at stake. You know, Steve started this final table by taking out Ozzy Shake on hand number one when he had two seven yeah, and Ozzy had two aces. Would it be fitting that if he outdrew the final opponent on the last hand as well? Now Steve's little sister, Kirsten, saying I'll prayers. <laughs> I'll take it clean. Well, he's been catching all night long, all night long for that one debacle. But other than that, he is the suck out king and he needs one more suck out. That's a little harsh. He's got called the suck out king. <laughs> well, of course, Steve looking for a king or an eight that would give him a straight. A queen would give him a lead in the pot. Come on, baby. Here comes a turn. It's a queen. Oh, no. Steve has taken the lead. Oh. That is a devastating card for Brooke Leiter. And I say that because he cannot win if a king comes up anymore. He would win if a 10 comes up. He needs a jack or a 10 to win this pot. And right now, Steve is nearly a 90% favored, Vince, to take this title. Well, Brooke is in disbelief. He ripped off the glasses. He is stunned, just staring down at the board. This is amazing and only fitting, I suppose, for the way the final table has gone. Can an outdraw capture this title? Steve, uh, Paul Ambrose potentially could be one of the youngest <laughs> winners ever on the World Poker Tour. He is one card away at this moment. So here we go, both players staring down at the river. If it's not a jack or a 10, Steve Paul Ambrose from Canada will be our champion. Here it comes. It's a king. He's made a king out of That's going to win the pot. Oh, my family. Steve Paul Ambrose. He has won this tournament match by outdrawing his opponent. He's going to win the tournament in Atlantis. Taking on $1,388,000. Never before have we seen such an onslaught of outdraws. The 22-year-old from Ontario, Canada, is our champion.
Best Top Door Champion from Ontario, Canada, Steve Paul Ambrose. Steve, what a show you put on here today. I mean, literally, you were the most aggressive player at the table consistently throughout this final table, but certainly you had your share of good luck at the final table as well. Tell us what it's like to be 22 years old and taking down over $1.3 million. Oh, it's, uh, it's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I, I don't really know what I'm going to do with the money, but this is, this is the time of the life, my life. Uh, I'd like to thank Poker Stars and Atlantis for hosting this thing. It was, it was fantastic. Thanks a lot. Well, congratulations to you, Steve. Just a terrific job. A great champion. We're going to see you again down the road, I'm sure. Congratulations to you. And now it's time to toast our champion with Budweiser, the official beer of the World Poker Tour. Here's to our champion from Ontario, Canada, Steve Paul Ambrose. For Vince Van Patten, Courtney Friel, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Mike Sexton saying thanks for watching. And until next time, may all your cards be live and your pots be monsters.